creating a beautiful and prosperous country in a safe delta we can be proud of. Thank Mr. Kauken for his virtual helicopter trip. Thank you very much indeed, and we wish him all success in his, in his role. Um, our next speaker is, um, I think, probably uh, the, the living embodiment, if I may say so, of um, how important it is for people to get Deltas right. Um, Mr. Cedric Grant from uh, uh, New Orleans is living through the process uh, of putting together that very wonderful city uh, after the floods five years ago. He's Deputy Mayor of Facilities, Infrastructure and Community Development at New Orleans. Uh, and his job is to ensure that the infrastructure is regenerated, uh, but with it uh, strong uh, local communities. And he's gonna speak on a Delta city five years after disaster. Thank you, Barbara. Your Royal Highness, Honorable Mayor, Your Excellency, Ministers, Distinguished de Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, thank you so much for providing this opportunity to come together in Rotterdam at this important time in history. It's often been said that the only thing we learn from history is that we do not learn from history. But we, as powerful voices in our communities, have the power to change that. The question is, do we have the will? Can we find a way or make one? Last month, we in New Orleans commemorated the fifth anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, both a natural and man-made disaster that, which killed 1,836 American citizens and flooded 80% of a great international city. Sustainable redevelopment is a challenge as my city rebuilds and recreates itself. Short-term solutions or half measures will no longer suffice. Storms are more powerful and destructive. Category five storms are coming and the buffer of wetlands on our coast has been degraded so severely that it no longer can fully protect the urban core of New Orleans. And looking to the future, we must prepare for the unpredictable impact climate change will have on coastal communities like New Orleans. These are some of the world's most complicated challenges and also some of the most costly to address we have no choice but to face them head on. We must remember that it's not just a matter of our way of life, it's a matter of life and death. It is because the dangers are so clear and present that coastal communities like New Orleans are uniquely poised to chart a new way forward. We must be the ones to set the standard for community renewal and sustainable development. We who live in the world's deltas or on the edges of great oceans are the most immediate laboratory for innovation and change. And our success or failure will be the symbol for the world's ability to accomplish great things or not. But for all coastal cities, our future is not just about survival, it's about sustainability. It's about redemption. It's about getting things right for now and for generations to come. For New Orleans, hurricanes are nothing new. I remember as a kid, we'd batten down the hatches, mama would empty the, the ice box, and power went out early and school closed for a few days. That was it. Hurricane Betsy in 1965 was the last really big storm which devastated large sections of New Orleans. Many in my generation never fully appreciated the power of the Gulf of Mexico simply because none of us had seen what it could do. But Katrina humbled us. It was a rude awakening to the dangers we face. In 2008, a full three years after Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Gustav showed how much Louisiana learned his lessons. New Orleans was evacuated well ahead of the storm and we moved over a million residents out of the region. There was a command and control between local, state, and federal officials and an improved levee system held. But Hurricane Gustav brought to bear another existential challenge to Louisiana. New Orleans was spared from a direct hit, but communities further inland that historically had been beyond hurricane's reaches were severely impacted. Much of their protective shield provided by our barrier islands and wetlands, is gone. For almost 100 years, 
the Louisiana coast has been slashed and burned. Louisiana wetlands are the fastest disappearing in the world. Since 1930, over 1,900 square miles of marsh have lost, been lost. Every year, 15,300 acres of coast evaporate into the Gulf of Mexico. By the time I finish this speech, another acre will have vanished. The wetlands are Louisiana's natural protection against hurricanes. For every three miles of marsh, a storm surge is reduced by nearly one foot. But the wetlands have been so depleted that Hurricane Gustav hit populated areas at nearly full force. In, in 2008, Gustav made clear that as the wetlands buffer shrinks, the two million people who live in the coastal areas of Louisiana may soon face a choice between their beloved community and family safety. No one should be forced to make such a choice. It's important to note that the destruction of Louisiana's wetlands is a direct result of human actions, not Mother Nature. Over the past 70 years, levee and dam construction in the Midwest and Plain states further inland have stopped the natural flow of the river from depositing sediments that build up marshes and estuaries, most damaging on the oil companies 10,000 miles of canals and pipelines. They snake through our marshes and bring oil and gas to onshore refineries in order to provide energy for the people of America. These pipelines and canals also provide a pathway for salt water from the Gulf of Mexico to flood, poison, and kill our wetlands. Acres vanish. Islands of trees are submerged. The waves lit close to our homes and our communities. It seems to have happened so quickly, but it really is generations in the making. Southern Louisiana must face a series of profound interconnected challenges, including bigger hurricanes, an eroding coast, rising sea levels, and a toxic flow of pollution from the Mississippi River. As time passes, these problems worsen. We must act with urgency before it is too late. It's time to change course, innovate, adapt, and hope for a better future. But hope is no substitute for a plan. We know how to restore our coasts and stop climate change. We know the importance of land building diversions and sediment pumping systems. We know the importance of conservation and re reducing CO2 emissions. Some of the world's best minds have dedicated their lives to solving these problems. We have the way, now we need the will and the resources. But it's also a matter of economic sense. The world's economy cannot exist without coastal and delta communities. We are gateways, key trading points to vast natural resources and abundant energy sources. Every year, Louisiana's coast provides America with more oil and gas than the nation's import, nation imports from Saudi Arabia. Louisiana is home to five of the, America's top 15 busiest ports and 460 million tons of goods are normally shipped down the Mississippi to the world and up the river to the heartland. And let us not take for granted that coastal communities provide the world with fish. Louisiana's coast is the nursery of the Gulf of Mexico home to the second largest fishing industry in America, annually counting for 30% of all seafood consumed by Americans. So whether it's food, clothing, metals, or oil, the rest of the world can rely on us coastal communities to put food on the table, keep the lights on, and gas in the tank. We must preserve and protect what we have left. American President Theodore Roosevelt set the course writing, it's not what we have that will make us great, a great nation is the way in which we use it. It is time to stop exploiting our resources in a way that is economically hypocritical, environmentally ignorant, and morally wrong. Looking to the future, we know the threat of climate change looms, and it looms especially large for coastal communities that many of us gathered here call home. As the earth warms, water levels rise. That's a matter of science, not opinion. It can be seen happening all over the world and will further complicate our flood protection and coastal land loss issues. We can change and we must. Our future will be defined by our actions now. Associations like Connecting Delta Cities Network will show the world how government, business, and people acting in concert can solve these big problems, protect the coastal communities that we all rely on, and turn crisis into opportunity, frustration into motivation, tragedy into triumph. We can take a lesson from the Netherlands. Their leadership and innovation in water management has changed the world. Dozens of coastal communities look, look here to Rotterdam to discover how to ensure a sustainable future. Your work gives us all hope that our children and grandchildren will be able to live